In today's tutorial, let's learn how to make a Tunisian honeycomb blanket and this is a small example of the stitching that you will do for this blanket. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today this is a mini example of a large afghan that we have here and this is called a honeycomb blanket. So the way that the stitching is working it's doing an alternation of doing the purl stitch as well as the simple stitch and when you combo those up it actually makes for a really neat look. Let me get you another example just to show you what it looks like when it's all done if you were to use a solid color because you really can't see it this carefully here. But when you see the entire afghan done and laying down you can actually see the stitch work a lot more better than what you can on this particular example. So what we're going to have today is that this here for example is the honeycomb. So you can actually see the honeycomb stitching working. You see it does little hexagonals inside your work. Same thing is happening here. It's just harder to tell when it's a solid, when it's a variegated yarn. Either way it's a really cool look. So you're gonna learn how to do that today. To do this afghan you're going to need a flexible cable Tunisian crochet hook or an afghan hook. So here's your uh, afghan hook just like so but you need the cabling to be on the end in order to get all of the stitches going across because this is really thick yarn and it's all done as one solid unit. So you'll need to do that. So these ones that are just stop here will not be excess or not be uh, suitable for you. So you need to have the extension added to your crochet hook. For tutorial purposes I'm not gonna be using this today. I'm just gonna be using a small example just to show you what it will look like and the stitch work that's involved for making this. So let's fasten on. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot and I'm only doing a small example just to show you the stitch work, stitch work that's involved. If you're doing this afghan you'll need to chain 102. I'm just going to do uh, 16 just to be able to show you what to do. So once it's on your hook, okay, you're just going to just chain as normal. So I'm gonna go one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen and sixteen. So you'll go to 102 and this is what it looks like at this point. It looks like regular crochet but we're going to change the story in just a moment. Before we can start the fancy footwork we need to establish the first row first. So we're gonna count second chain from the hook. So one and two turn it over and get the back hump or the back loop and just yarn over and pull through and leave it on your hook. So what's gonna happen here is that eventually this is gonna move down to the end of that particular cable that's attached and you slide it right onto the cable and it gets out of your way. So you're just gonna continue to collect all these. Now this is part of our Tunisian series so I, you're pretty well probably comfortable with doing this at this point. If not you can always just check out other um, tutorials in this series in order to back up your educational skills just to catch us, catch back up with us. So we're just gonna go all the way across. So if your math is done right and you've chained 102, there should be 102 loops on your particular hook and your cable by the time you're done. In my case I did 16 so by the time I get to the other side there should be 16 loops in order to make this work. Now I will say the repeat pattern is in sets of two so if you wanna change the size and make it different just make sure it's in uh, a number that's divisible by two. Okay because we're gonna be showing you what to do next. Okay so I'm going all the way across. And so I wanna just take a double count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I know that I'm right at this point and so I'm going to head back in the other direction. No matter what row you're on, every time you go backward we never turn our work. We're always gonna do it the same way. So we're always just gonna yarn over and pull through one loop only and then the remainder we're gonna yarn over and pull through two. So we're gonna do that each and every time we go back regardless of what row we're on. Ok, 
Okay, so that's your standard go to. And so basically if you were having your, this all on the cable all the way down your hook, um, you basically just start pulling this hook backward. So I use this hand to kind of pull the work off the hook more than I'm using this hand to um, pull the needle back. So it's a combination deal. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way back and now we're going to begin the process of what we need to do in order to create the honeycomb. So off camera what I have is a little clothespin and I've colored it green on one side and that's shor short for a Tunisian pearl stitch. So and then the other side I've colored as orange and then that is short for or our Tunisian simple stitch. I did that so that I can remember. I found with myself even with my own examples that with the yarn being variegated it's hard to always tell what the last row is. So what I wanted to do is that I wanted to label up these um, to be able to match. So for example, I'm about to start off and in order to start this pattern we're gonna be mixing Tunisian simple stitch with the purl stitch. So what we're going to do then is the first one in, okay, we're just going to do a simple stitch and just go like this. So what I wanna do at this point is that before I begin anything further I want to say this is orange for Tun Tunisian simple stitch and I wanna clip it because then I know when I look back when I go to the next round that I can say yes the last row was Tunisian simple stitch so the next one must be the Tunisian pearl stitch to start. So it will make sense in just a moment. So the next one is going to be a pearl stitch so we just bring this yarn forward going into the next one. See how the yarn is forward and then pinch and pull through. Just like that. Okay, and so the next one is a simple stitch. So just into the next vertical, pull through and then the next one is a purl. So we're just alternating between the two. So if this is purl, okay, so the next one is a simple. So that with the purling we have to make sure that this yarn comes in front first. So you can either physically move it down like this or you can just use your hook and push it out of the way down so then when you insert your hook into the actual next loop this is down in between. Pinch and pull through. Okay, the next one is a simple. So where you can go wrong on this is that if you mixed it up and you accidentally lost count or you did two rows identical to each other because every other row is opposite to each other. So this one we're starting off with according to me the orange is a simple stitch. The next row we wanna start off with a purl stitch in order to make it work. But I wanna do um, a little bit of a demonstration to show you what the difference is as well. So you can see, see how this string is going vertical or going horizontal? So is this one. So those are where you've done the purl. Okay, so if you can identify that it's a lot easier for you. So if I just purled this last one even if I can't remember the next one must be a simple. And I do that opposite to each other all the way across. So this must be a purl. Okay, and in the very end it doesn't matter you just simply just go into the chain stitch. Right at the end there will be two strings pull through. So let's go back in the opposite direction. So to do that you yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through two all the way back. Just like that. Okay, so that's as easy as it gets. So now what I want to do is that I want to start the next row but the next row has to be opposite to what is in the row below. So um, according to this clip I used a simple stitch to start. So this time I'm gonna use a purl stitch. So I'm gonna move the yarn down forward first and then do a purl to begin. And before I move anything further I wanna turn this around and I wanna turn it so I can see the green. And so then I, when I come back I remember what it is. I couldn't for the life of me um, look at it and be able to determine if I had purled or whether I had um, done a simple stitch when I was using variegated. It's really difficult to tell. So I just came up with that method just to make it easier for myself. So I wouldn't go bonkers. 
So again you're just going opposite to each other and the pattern is not really gonna be visible at this time. Um, it's still a little too early but we just have to get one more pass by us and then we can start seeing the honeycombs taking effect. So I'm looking where the verticals are or sorry the horizontals you can see there's see where they are? So they should be like a brick wall and just kinda going opposite to each other all the way down in order to make it work. So I guess half the battle is to um, make sure that you can kinda identify what the stitches is doing. Just pay attention right at the beginning and you should be okay. Okay and I'm working my way all the way back to this side and then again I'm right in the edge. So let's just uh, yarn over, go through one loop and then yarn over and go through two. Okay, so now the next row is just I'm gonna just let you go with this next row. I'll show you what to do again and basically this whole entire afghan is the same way just reversing two of these rows. So let's do our first one. So the green represented that I did a purl stitch to start so therefore this time I have to start off with a simple stitch. So let me turn my clothespin around. It's now orange and so the next one must be purl. And so the, the actual um, stitching you're going to notice is actually gonna start forming the honeycomb in just a moment. Okay, so you can kinda see from a distance it looks a lot better but you can kind of see that the honeycomb uh, depressions that are left behind are going to be visible. So let me show you how to, um, fin I'm gonna finish this off on my own and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to cast off at this particular point as well because you're gonna wanna know how to do that as well. Now you're gonna wanna keep going until you get about 56 inches in height uh, to go all the way across before doing the fastening off. So what we want to do at that point then is that we want to slip in behind the first one okay and we wanna grab the yarn, pull through and through and we wanna do that all the way across. So it's like a simple stitch but you're actually pulling it through as a slip stitch and this will bind off that edge. Make sure that when you go to do this bind off that you're not too tight because uh, it'll make one side less flexible than the other and you don't want that of course. At this point you can take off your marker. You're pretty confident with your skills at this point just to be able to fasten off and you just do that all the way across. When you get to the other side you just simply just want to um, fasten off, weave in your ends and then there is a border that is applied to this uh, particular one. That's the next color. There is six main color or of one color and then one of the other and that one of the other is the outside border that goes around this entire afghan. And you can see that this leaves a beautiful um, stitch work in order to do your border. Okay and then you come right into the end and then you weave in your ends just like so. So that would be how you would do your, your um, stitch and you can start seeing that the honeycomb is starting to take effect and it looks really cool. And again it's more visible the further back you get from this particular afghan. To do the border for this thing all you just need to do is this on the corners you need to apply three single crochets in the corner and then just work yourself down the side edges just into uh, the same spaces all the way down for one single crochet into each and this is the next corner. So then there will be three single crochets here and you wanna go around twice. So every time you hit that very corner uh, you wanna go put three single crochets. Again I'm just working my way all the way around. A very simple easy to follow process in order to really make it work like so. It does say to use a smaller crochet hook uh, when you go to do this. So I've been using a larger one so I just wanna reduce down probably to the size ball that it's recommended uh, on, the, on the yarn ball itself in order to make it work. 
you've got to remember with Tunisian is that Tunisian is always a tighter tension. So even though we're using a larger hook it's probably bringing it back to the same recommendation size when it when all is said and done at the end. So that's all you just need to do. Just chase it with the border and you have a beautiful edging just like so with your honeycomb right in the middle. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Your Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. We'll see ya.